<laughs> no, you can get it easily on Amazon, uh, be it in Japan, in the UK, in the US, even in Switzerland. Uh, and uh, if you want a personal signed copy, you can also come to my home here in Dili and get a hand signed copy and a cup yeah. of coffee. And you know, I'm just roaming a little bit through your book, which is called The Prayer Revolution Handbook, written by um, the, uh, Mr. Dettelbacher. So, uh, one chapter is um, Bureaucracy and bu or bureau Bureaucracy Meets Terrorism. So, I think uh, some of your experiences are inspired by actual happenings, like stuff you got confronted with, that, 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 that they were stuck right in your eye, like um, some totally silly regulations and just, you know, the whole bureaucracy would be silly, which would be really crazy. Is this correct? Is this actual yeah, happening? I mean, as I said before, India is really the world capital of uh, bureaucracy, I think. Everybody can learn something from here. And in, in a certain way, I mean, if you see like the, the Indian railways, for instance, are the, the biggest employer in the world. So there, there are large companies and it's a large state and government. Uh, and there need to be, of course, some rules and regulations. That's understandable. But uh, uh, especially since uh, 2001 and the uh, so-called war on terror, uh, these regulations have basically exploded. And so, uh, yeah, uh, the so-called word there, you, you, you maybe you have said you were listening before, you, have you heard the, the Family Guy uh, clip? Let, um, so we have to invade the, uh, Iran? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, of course yeah. that's, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's basically stuff, you know, we have uh, a couple of big wars going on right now, those wars, they, they have this very, they are very uh, strangely constructed because those are um, um, countries like thousands of miles away on other continents that get attacked for very obscure reasons. Yeah, actually, I mean, it's, it's not so obscure in a sense. I mean, it's the simple point is that, uh, especially the US and to a large extent also parts of Europe, have moved into what I call a war economy. But which is similar to the 1930s Germany, so large. So uh, an economy who, who um, like, uh, runs to a considerable amount on, uh, on war. Of course, I mean, the so-called military industrial complexes, I think, as an intrusion at the it's basically a large and larger part of this, uh, of the country's economy and uh, the wars to keep the economy from, from collapsing and uh, to keep the dollar from collapsing, basically. So, so tell me something, what um, Ben Bernanke does in the United States, the, the chief of the Fed, Federal Reverse Stuff Bank, um, Will this lead to anything, or I mean, what will happen? Because he he is now under attack. Uh, Critics attack him strongly, and he he prints money, prints money like a fool. I mean, um, where will this end? Yeah, actually, I think the, the Chinese uh, are already quite upset about this, and I mean, they just initiated quantitative, quantitative easing of uh, part two, which is. Uh, as in Hollywood, not much better than part one, usually worse, and it's uh, it's nothing much else than uh, investing into the printing press. So uh, I think the Chinese are upset, and there are uh, and many other countries who hold uh, big dollar reserves and and treasury bonds and such uh, such as this. Um, and I think there are signs uh, that they don't tolerate it any longer. Like, for instance, there is now an um, independent Chinese uh, rating agency that has just downrated the U.S. Rating agency? <laughs> a rating? Oh, sorry, sorry. It's, not, yeah, yeah. So. it's just because, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, and no, no, no rating going on there, but ratings and there's there's um, sometimes there sometimes not so now tell us you know i mean maybe we are going into a crisis maybe a revolution will happen but as you explain in your book those revolutions they are part of the whole cycle of the whole corruption i mean they just uh, you know um i think the king is dead long live the, the king no yeah it's basically a kind of i think the french revolution and, and uh, these movements are have not uh, completely vanished from uh, from our daily history so it's they, they can kind of uh, coming back and 
I mean, communism is dead, and uh, but many of the problems that Karl Marx, for instance, addressed were not solved, and they were uh, they are still open and they are still on the table in a way. So uh, I think the revolution that started in the 18th century basically is a continuous revolution, and it's it has to be uh, to become a much less violent revolution, um, which yeah. does not change. Grass, up, up, up from the root, up from the grass, decentralized, people um, getting enlightened, I mean, enlightened themselves, you know, reading, understanding, passing on, delivering, and then, you know, here and there, and, and there is some kind of tipping point, like 3% of the whole population, they must come together on a new stage, uh, like um, um, envision something, and then the rest flips with... Correct? Yeah, I think that's basically what you need to uh, generate a morphogenetic field, as Rupert Sheldrake would put it, uh, where, where basically the, the software is um, ready to uh, be accessed by the large crowd of, of the same species, which is our, us bipods. Exactly, and you know, this process is happening right now, this is Pride Sites. We want to get these 3% together, and uh, Mr. Klaus Dittelbacher from New Delhi has written the Pre-Revolution Handbook. This is another big step towards this. Um, go to Amazon, type in the Pre-Revolution Handbook, Klaus Dittelbacher from New Delhi. Thank you very much, and uh, I would say good luck with your book. I will continue, and we have another chat in in the near future. Okay, Acha? fine, very good. Uh, then I can finally See. go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> now you can finally go to bed. Also, the cats they, they, they can now lay down easy, maybe ruining the silk carpet a little bit, but you you don't you, you go to sleep. Yes, you know. <laughs> 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 Okay, class, then tell me something. Let's say if in the future they will have kids, will you um, will you talk um, um, like will Sonia talk to them in Swiss German or or in or in High German? Oh, uh, well, I think I would say uh, uh, Hindi with Styrian accent. I'm I'm getting more and more uh, nationalistic about being a Styrian, not an Austrian, and not a German. So. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, yes. I'm getting more and more patriotic and also what is the name? Monarchistic, no, no, no. Uh, patriotic, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> About my country, the Barat. I'm Dr. Marat Lander Hatiwa. This is was Dr. Andrew No Klaus Gettelwacher, and he has written a new book, The Pre-Revolution Handbook. Goodbye, Klaus. Talk to you soon. Bye.